Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going on a rant about the modern web. So, I've got up here today three different tutorials. So the first one is about View 3 with TypeScript. The second is about how to build web apps with the Go language. And the third one is related but not identical. It's about Go text templates which are a very useful tool for generating HTML output as it says here. Which you use a slightly different one but it's all basically the same. And so inside of Go there's a kind of meta programming language that can be used to just entirely format text and it's really cool. And it got me thinking actually. Why then do we use all of these weird front-end frameworks like Vue? I mean, you shouldn't really be using JavaScript frameworks anyway, in my opinion. They, they all kind of suck. But why do we have to use one of these when we can very easily have localizable and Turing complete data formatting on the server? And all of this is done using for performant regular expression parsing. And to, to make it even better, it's type safe, it avoids syntax errors, and it's completely secured because it's server side. So what gives then? Why are we still using these weird front end frameworks? So if we actually go into uh, uh, if we actually go into this sample project I set up for Vue, uh, this is what a sample Vue project looks like. So out of the box, there's a couple of complicated things here. So if we look in Vue.config.js. We can see this, you basically have to configure where all of the pages are. And so I added this just as an example. And uh, just to show how complicated this is, we're going to say npm run serve. Uh, I installed npm just for this. And right, just out of the box, just starting a development server took a noticeable amount of time. Okay, that, that shouldn't really be the case. Okay, second off, we can see that there's a whole bunch of weird stuff here. We've got a source folder and a public folder, so which one is actually the server code? Well, uh, what if I told you that it's actually both? Because they're actually transpiled together using some bloatware framework called Webpack at runtime. And I don't know why it has to do this and why it can't just be like every other JavaScript library in existence, but apparently when you do front-end programming it has to inject itself into literally everything. So we go to localhost colon, I think it's 8003. No, it's just 8080. Um, and you can see we get my first uh, view app, and this is I made this a little while ago, I think, so that we could uh, uh, test out view components, but if we go into the inspect elements panel here, we have three different JavaScript files all being loaded, and if we actually look at the JavaScript files in question under JS, what is this? This is this is 956 lines long, and at least a hundred of them are comments. What what's going on? So I actually investigated, and what's going on is actually uh, the Webpack. As I was saying earlier, it's just a bloatware framework for soy devs to use for some reason. Um, the only actual minified stuff is in the image folder, and even that's been webpacked to hell. It's been like compressed down into this weird, and then they've changed all the names around and stuff. What's what's going on? And so if we look at these other chunk.vendor.js, these are also hundreds of lines long for little to no reason, and it's just basically the same thing over and over again. And then if we look at the other one, this has been minified, and it's still 400, nearly 500 lines long. So what what is the point in all of this stuff? Well, the point in all of this stuff is so that lazy soy devs who wrote this software don't have to copy files around. That's literally the whole point of it. If we go into the uh, public folder, uh, you can see that we have a couple of HTML files. So what are these for? Well, very little actually, because uh, all that they are is just some static thing that's basically the same all the way around. If we actually look and we diff the about and the index page, there's no difference between them. It's the exact same thing. but just so that they don't have to copy and paste the title of the web page we have to add three different web frameworks into the mix just so that this can be handled automatically and we have to add like some weird regex powered parsing engine just so that that will work as well like html webpack plugin options title 
Why was that needed? Why couldn't we have just written in here my first my first view website? Was that really so hard? I don't really think that it was. But apparently that's too difficult for people these days, so instead we have to get Webpack to do it for them. Then if we actually go into the source thing, uh what's even going on here? Let's have a look. So first off we've got a JS file for each page. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, that's what I'd recommend you do, although I'd recommend you actually use TypeScript if you have to use JavaScript. And these JavaScript files, again, identical. These are exactly the same file, just copied and pasted into multiple different places. Now to be completely fair to them, you don't have to do this, there are ways to avoid it, but it's not exactly the most clear thing in the world and this is because of this weird enforced project cell. For instance, if we go into app.view what is going on here? So first off we've got two different components that are imported from the components thing. So this is to make your HTML code reusable, okay, that's kind of a a goal that you might want to go for, but if we go into the components directory and we can see uh, hello world dot view. All of all of this is just about formatting data on the client into the uh, thing, and so that could be useful if you need to dynamically update if you're writing a game or something. But really, when can this not be done on the server? Like this MSG thing is actually hard coded down here. If we have a look, it, or it's a prop, so that means that it's being passed in here. But this could easily be hard coded, or not hard coded, but done dynamically uh, on the server. Oops, I think I opened two files by accident. But this could easily be done on the server using Go formatting and uh, Go templates. It literally calls itself a template. So all that we've done is move something that could easily be done for free on the server to something that the client now has to download megabytes worth of JavaScript to do. If we look in the JS directory again, just to give you an idea, this index.js file here, if we actually look at the main.js file, look how big this is, and then look how big this is that it gets turned into. What is this? This is ridiculous. Why? And then don't you just don't even get you started on the stuff that you see in the webpack directory. Like, look at this. I didn't write any of this. And then there's just randomly a line that's what 1,705 columns long at the end. And this is so clearly machine generated as well. This could easily have been done with a Go template string. And yet it wasn't, because for some reason we seem to have this modern obsession in the modern web with doing everything on the client. I mean, being, having done game programming in the past, the first thing they teach you is do not trust the client. The client can be manipulated. I mean, even if I just own the developer console, look, uh, console, console.log, ha ha ha, I hacked you. Oh no! Oh no, this web page, it's hacking us. Like, the, the client is the least trustworthy part of the entire exchange in a web scenario. It's ridiculous. So, the next thing that I want to complain about is the fact that this assets folder here, this is just another example of soy devery. So, instead of just having these assets and having them on our server somewhere, instead we have to webpack them and gzip them through three different libraries before they can actually end up on the client, and that's how this image folder arrives. It's gone through a bunch of webpack processing or whatever until eventually it actually arrives at the client once it's been through the webpack grinder and uh, you know why this can not just be static on the server nobody even knows it's just all ridiculous in multiple multiple ways so this is this is just yet another example of the modern web just sucking and if we look at the, this tutorial here, a bunch of it's talking about how you know TypeScript helps you, uh, you know TypeScript helps you find development errors at compile time and richer editor support, easier to read and understand code. Now, I don't know about you, but 
if we look at this here, app.view, this to me doesn't seem like the clearest thing in the world. Like, why are we export defaulting here? And what, what's it being exported to? Where's this going? Well, probably because the entire build process is really kind of abstracted and really complicated as well. To the point where, if we actually look in the package.json, it has to have an entire different program just to build the actual program. Just why? We have to have view CLI service so that we can serve or build the application. You don't even get to see the webpack config because it's hidden away in some node modules folder underneath five megabytes of JavaScript. This this kind of reminds me of that old meme where people said that eventually there'll be the GNU core utils, but instead it'll be the GNU soy utils written in TypeScript, transpiled to ES6, run through a virtual machine running an Emacs ES lint or something. You know, and on the Cat V website, there's a perfect example of this where they say that Grub3 will be written in JavaScript to run through a Java virtual machine on like the Linux kernel, run through K, uh, KDBoss or whatever. This is exactly what's going on here because some guy couldn't be bothered to actually learn how to do just compilation properly instead we have to do some view CLI garbage and then have it automatically do a bunch of stuff for us and I got this because I was actually interested I wanted to see what view was and why people use it like I did with react and so I downloaded it, I learnt how you use it, I even learnt some of the advanced stuff like computed properties and whatever. And uh, all I ended up concluding is, okay, th this is just garbage written by soy devs. There, there's very little to no point in using this at all. If you must use it, however, here is a good example of where you must use it. So um, if we see here, and I'm just going to run up uh, a PHP development server, if we go to localhost 8080, uh, we can see this This is actually being controlled with uh, view. And if we look in the developer console, you can see index.js is nice and simple. Interesting. So we actually have managed to use this and keep it simple. Why is this? Well, this is because we're using a supposed unstable development version of Vue where you just, uh, if you ignore all of this dark reader stuff, in fact, if I disable it, we get a nice simple thing. But all it's doing is just loading in Vue through a script tag. That's the way it should be, rather than loading it through four different abstraction layers with Webpack so that we can get some megabyte soy garbage in our uh, developer console and then we load index.js this is simple you can do whatever you want with it I could even have written this in TypeScript and then transpiled it on the fly and I could have done all of this without ever having to touch any code that I haven't written and at the end of all of this we get a nice light website that regardless of using Vue is still incredibly fast to load. If I reload this with cache disabled, that's still loaded incredibly quickly even though it's downloading the entirety of Vue. And if we look finally at index.html and in uh, index.js, you can see this is so much simpler. Instead of spreading out our application over like seven different files, all of which are in different directories and hidden under some webpack filter, instead we can see everything that we want about our app, and it's written in just plain JavaScript or TypeScript I would recommend that people use and then HTML as well. Instead of hiding our template in some random directory somewhere, instead it's right here where the UI is. If you have to use Vue, use it like this, use it with TypeScript and use it with care. But then again, I wouldn't really recommend that anybody use JavaScript anyway because, you know, 90% of websites just don't need it. You don't need JavaScript for, like, your personal blog. There's no need for it. If you do need dynamic websites though, go templates. They're good. They're very, very useful. Just look at this here. It tells you exactly all of the syntax that you need and it fits on a single page. I could write a very simple web application that shows you your IP address and maybe like your geolocation back to you using just a few lines of Go and it would probably pass off as a better website than most of the soy devery written in Node.js and whatever. I cannot for the life of me understand why we're still using all of this 
absolute trash that just slows down people's browsers. If, if we look at the go.dev website, we can still see it's actually pretty good. Like, most of this is just plain HTML, and you can tell that it has been formatted using the, uh, you can tell it's been formatted using the Go uh, template system. And so the go.dev website, if we reload it with cache disabled, still loads incredibly quickly. And so this will be the same for people with horrible internet as well. If you look at my uh, usage stats for memory and swap history, there was a slight spike, but, um, you know, we're measuring our network usage in bytes per second. Or maybe that's bits per second, I don't know. But, you know, this website's minimal, and yet it still has literally everything you could ever want to know about stuff on it. It's, it, it's fantastic. So, I guess the moral of the story here isn't necessarily don't use Vue. It's don't be afraid to question the fact that websites and the technology behind them sometimes are just bad. Just because some CLI, like the Vue CLI, which just sucks as it is, why does it take, like, why why does it take this long to print out a help screen? But uh, just because some CLI seems to think that it's the best way of doing things does not necessarily mean that it actually is. Uh, set up your own projects, do things your way, don't listen to soy devs. End of story.